In this video, you're going to learn how to set up and use the Feutech Pocket Gimbal. I'm going to show you some real test footage that I've shot. I'm going to walk you through some of the features and functions. And finally, stick around to the end because I'm going to give you an honest review and tell you if this gimbal is worth the money or not. I've been shooting my vlogs in the last year and a half on my DJI Osmo Pocket. And I love these pocket cameras because they're small and they shoot amazing video quality and have great sound. And they're also not intrusive. So if you have a DSLR camera with a shotgun mic on the top for vlogging, you probably have realized that if you're in a restaurant or any other crowded place, it's really intrusive and bulky and in your face. Whereas pocket cameras like these are really small and compact and easy to carry around. So after using the Osmo Pocket from DJI, I wanted to get my hands on the Feutech to see how it compares because this gimbal is more affordable and I know that most vloggers starting out are on a budget. So I wanna test it out and see how it compares. Let's take a look and see what's inside. So inside you have the gimbal on the right and you have the carrying case on the left. And inside the carrying case, you have the USB-C charging cable and you also have the wrist strap. I highly, highly, highly recommend you connect the wrist strap to the gimbal. You don't wanna drop this thing and damage it. Uh, they are pretty fragile. So I would highly recommend connecting this. I'm gonna get rid of these for now. And we don't need the carrying case for now either. So I'm just gonna take the gimbal itself out and get rid of the box. And the first thing you'll notice is that it's really light, just like the Osmo Pocket from DJI. And it does feel a little bit more plasticky um, and a little bit lighter, but the screen does look more modern and it looks bigger. So let's go ahead and start this gimbal up but first make sure that you've charged it. And from my experience, it takes about an hour to charge. You'll notice that it didn't come with a micro SD card and well, you need a micro SD card because you won't be able to record any footage without one. And I'll leave a description in the link below from my preferred SD card from Amazon. And I'll also leave a link to a tripod. These tripods are really cheap, but they're very handy. You don't really need one, but if you wanna do something like a time-lapse shot, you don't wanna set it on the table because it can fall over. You wanna connect it to a tripod. And sometimes the tripod can act as a handy extension or a handle. So if you wanna get like selfie videos, you can connect it here and you can get a little bit wider shot. But for now, I'm just gonna set the tripod to the side. And while it's charging up, I would recommend downloading the Feucam app. And you can do that by scanning this QR code or you can simply search for Feucam in the app store. So before you turn on the gimbal, I just wanted to share a couple specs. So you can see that it only weighs 115 grams. It records in 4K up to 60 FPS. It can record Ultra HD 4K at 60 FPS. It has a Sony CMOS sensor with six layer glass lenses and a field of view of up to 120 degrees. And you should note that it does not support an external microphone. So now I'm gonna show you how to set up the Feutech Pocket Gimbal. Once it's fully charged, you can turn it on by clicking the power button on the right side of the gimbal and the gimbal will come to life. The top left corner shows the camera mode that you're in. And the upper right corner is the Feutech Pocket's battery level. So the first thing you want to do is go into the settings and format your micro SD card to make sure that it's compatible with the gimbal. Please be sure that you don't have any important data on your SD card because formatting does delete everything. So to format the card, you swipe down from the top screen and go to setup and then swipe right to format. You can also turn on the Wi-Fi to connect the gimbal to your smartphone app. Click open Wi-Fi and then go to the Wi-Fi settings on your phone and enter the password unprompted. Before I go on, I'd just like to say that if you have any questions or anything about the Feutech Pocket Gimbal, leave them in the comments section below and I'll do my best to get back to you within 24 hours. And if you're enjoying this video, please click the like button to show your support. And if you want to see more tutorials and reviews, please click subscribe. It's important that you connect your gimbal to the app because it's likely that there's a firmware update that you need to install. And while you're in the settings, I would recommend putting the metering to average so that the sensor is measuring light from the whole frame. And now you can swipe left to auto power. And I like to put it at five minutes so that I don't accidentally forget to turn it off and lose all of my battery. Swipe left again to turn the quality to priority. Also be sure to turn on the tilt control so that you can adjust the angle of the gimbal through the touchscreen. If you're on the home screen again, you can swipe down to the settings. I like to swipe to the right and turn on the screen mode to normal as opposed to full screen because I like to see the entire frame when I'm shooting. Swipe right to enter normal mode or professional mode. If you're a seasoned videographer, you might like professional mode. In this mode, you can click on the camera parameters and adjust things like white balance, volume, color, and exposure. If I'm outside in sunny weather, then I like my display brightness on high, but if it's nighttime and I don't need so much brightness, then I would turn it down to low so that you save some battery. 
Now I'll show you how to use the Fayutech Pocket Gimbal buttons. Pressing the power button on any of the setup screens returns you to the home screen. And if you're on the home screen already and press the power button, you'll flip between video and photo mode. Pressing the mode button with the letter M on it changes between follow mode, all follow mode, and pan mode. And follow mode is the default mode you're on when the gimbal starts up. So in follow mode, when I pan to the right and I pan to the left, the camera follows. If I tilt down and I tilt up, the camera also follows. However, if I roll to the right or roll to the left, the camera stays level. By pressing the M button once to enter all follow mode, it's sort of like pan follow mode. So when I pan left and pan right, tilt down, tilt up, it follows. But also when I roll to the right or roll to the left, the camera also follows. And then finally, by pressing the mode button one more time, I'm in pan mode. So here, when I pan right, pan left, it follows. But when I tilt down or tilt up, you'll notice that the camera stays facing forward. If I press and hold the M button, I enter lock mode. And what lock mode does is it locks all of the axes. So if I pan right, pan left, tilt down, tilt up, roll, the camera stays facing the direction it's pointing. If for whatever reason the gimbal sort of gets out of alignment, you can double tap the M mode and it recenters. If I wanna go into selfie mode for vlogging, then I triple tap the M button and the gimbal will flip around 180 degrees. If I triple tap again, then the camera faces forward. The shutter button is just on the left of the M button and it has a little red dot in the middle. If I click that once in video mode, it starts recording video. If I click again, it stops recording. If you're in photo mode and you click it, it just takes a photo. If you press and hold the shutter button for three seconds, it turns on and turns off Wi-Fi. If I wanna set different parameters for video or photo, then I swipe from right to left on the screen. And here you can see that I can select between photo, video, slow motion, and so on. And then if I click the three dots, then I can change the resolution. So I can go all the way up to 4K. And then I can also change the frame rate. You can also create a time-lapse or a panorama. And to do this, you will need the tripod because as I mentioned earlier, it's a little bit dangerous to just keep the gimbal on a surface without any support. So just connect your tripod and then play around with these functions and you can get some really cool shots. If you swipe from left to right on the screen, then you go to your albums. And if you click on the heart, it'll save it as my favorites when you're viewing the album in your app on the smartphone. So now let's go outside and look at some test footage shot on the Feiyu Tech Pocket Gimbal. So perhaps the most important thing when you're vlogging is not video quality, but audio quality. And this is the audio quality from the Feiyu Tech Pocket Gimbal without any external microphone because it doesn't support an external microphone. And now let's compare it to the DJI Osmo Pocket. And this is the auto quality of the DJI Osmo Pocket, straight out of the camera, no external microphone. I'll let you decide which one you think sounds better. So here's the DJI Osmo Pocket and here's the Fayutech Pocket Gimbal. And side by side, you can tell that they're pretty much exactly the same size and shape. The Fayutech screen is slightly larger. I will comment that the build of the DJI does feel a little bit more firm and a little bit, you know, able to resist the elements. And one thing that I have noticed is that the DJI is slightly more responsive in the gimbal and has slightly better face tracking and it flips around into selfie mode a little bit faster. And if I had to choose between these two, I guess it really comes down to budget. If you're a new vlogger just starting out, then the Feiyu Tech is perfect. It's absolutely perfect. It has all of the same features as the Osmo Pocket. And as you can see, they're basically the same exact thing. So it's really up to you depending on your budget. You can't go wrong with either of them. For the price, the Feiyu Tech Pocket Gimbal is an excellent value.